the least integer greater or equal to x. That makes me want to kind of draw a number line and think about going down the number line from right to left and stop right before I hit x. Unless x is an integer, in which case I would stop at x. So we're talking about the smallest integer possible, the least integer that's still greater or equal to x. And there's actually a term for this. This function is called the ceiling value. It essentially just means we're rounding up to the nearest integer. And you can read all about that in my book, or you could even just Google the term ceiling value or ceiling function, and uh, you can read all about it. So when this question asks us, is the ceiling value of x zero? In other words, when x is rounded up, do you get zero? What that's really asking is, does x live somewhere between negative one and zero on the number line? Because if it's anywhere in that range, not including negative one itself, right? Because negative one itself wouldn't be rounded up to zero. It would just be rounded to negative one. But if you're anywhere above negative one, so from negative 0 0.9999 all the way up to zero, anything in there would be rounded up to zero. So that's what the question is asking. Does X live right inside of that range? So let's evaluate the statements right after this. So neither of these statements really answers our question because, you know, statement one says we're somewhere in between negative one and positive one, right? So does that mean that we're between negative one and zero? We might be there, but we might be on the other side of zero. So not sufficient. Statement two says we're below zero, but it doesn't say how far below zero. So are we in between negative one and zero or are we below negative one? We don't know. So neither statement is sufficient on its own. but when we combine them, we can infer that x must be somewhere to the right of negative one and to the left of zero, and that actually does answer our question. We wanted to know, does x live within that range? Is it confined to that range between negative one and zero, excluding negative one? And when we combine the statements, we do find out that that is the case. So correct answer is C. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.